I know what you're thinking. What the hell is wrong with these men? They don't know what they want. They're playing games and not keeping it real. They don't want a serious relationship. They don't know how to act right. I mean, we can go on and on and on and on. Many of you are dealing with a lot of unfortunate situations with men who just aren't getting it together. Now, I always have to make clear to you, this is not all men. Even if that has been your last seven, five, whatever number of experiences, please understand there is better. You can receive better. Not all men are engaging in unhealthy behavior. However, I can't deny the fact that it is happening. I can't deny the fact that you're, you are going to come across some guys who are simply trying to waste your time. But why? Why are these men wasting your time? So let me break it down for you and get right to it. Now, listen, I have a number one reason at the very end of this, but I want to list a couple of reasons that maybe you haven't given enough thought to. All right. So number one, he doesn't know how to let you go. Aw, ain't that so sad? <laughs> but listen, I, I'm not trying to just create sympathy for the man, but I am trying to speak to a real issue. Like, listen, I can't tell you how often I come across men who they don't know how to let this woman go. They don't know how to simply break things off. This is one of the big reasons why the phenomena of ghosting, and for those of you who don't know what ghosting is, ghosting is when you essentially stop hearing from the person. You reach out to them, they, they don't respond to your text or calls, they're just gone. It's done, no explanation. And we see that happening more and more. And I always explain to, explain to people that ghosting, the main reason why it happens is because people don't know how to have that uncomfortable conversation of, I'm no longer interested, or I want to move on or evaluate other options or whatever it is. People innately don't like feeling like the bad guy. And I have to say, this is even more so with men. Now, I know you might be saying, oh, hell no, nah, these men are always the bad guy. No, listen, to, to intentionally, or what he feels may come across as intentionally hurt you by saying, I no longer want to talk to you, that can be tough for a lot of guys, all right? And so you have situations where the man either ghosts you, and what's actually worse than him ghosting you is him not letting go and dragging things along, which is what we're talking about here, because this leads to the wasted time. I'm not trying to say, hey, ghost away, <laughs> because that, that's a good thing, but I am saying that holding on to you knowing he's not really interested is much worse than simply letting you go, because at least in when he lets you go, you can move on. But when things are getting dragged along, you're still hoping for more. You're still engaged. You're still being consumed by this situation. But again, he struggles. Now, here's the way to help you get around this issue or to, to properly address this issue. This is where you as a woman, and, and we're going to talk about some of these things later in the video, have to get really good at understanding when the situation is not what it needs to be. Understanding when you need to let go and cut things off. Because if you're expecting for him or any person to do the right thing, to do right by you, you are setting yourself up for what's going to be disappointment in most situations. We cannot live life hoping that people will do what's right for us. We have to learn to do what is right for us. We have to learn how to take the appropriate action in situations. And so a lot of times women will say to me, well, why didn't he let me go? Why didn't he let me go? Well, why didn't you let him go? All the red flags and signs were there. What were you holding on to? But again, let's put a pin in that specific point because we're going to dive into that a little bit more. But bottom line is he struggles to let go, so he allows things to move along. And, and, and please understand that it is, this is not a situation where the man is being everything you need him to be. And he, but he doesn't know how to let go. No, if he deeply doesn't want to be there, then chances are you're going to see inconsistencies. You're going to see things that show you, okay, he kind of has one foot in, one foot out. He's unable to fully commit to you might be one of the clearest signs you're going to get. All right. He may still deal with you, but he won't commit to you. 
So again, all of this goes back to, yes, because he struggles to let go, which leads to time being wasted, but this is why you have to learn when to cut things off. Another reason why men uh, waste your time or keep wasting your time is that you keep focusing on what you do for him. Let me explain. So I'll, I'll never forget, there was a story of a client I had, and she came to me because she was all distraught about her relationship with this guy. And, you know, I kind of told her, you know, give me the breakdown or whatever. So this guy, true story, you know, he had, in this situation, been out of jail. Not that that's really relevant to this story. I'm just giving you some extra details. He had been out of jail. I think they were engaging while he was in jail. He finally gets out, not to get into a relationship, all right? And the whole time she was holding him down and doing so much for him and all these things. So I asked, I said, well, and she would say, you know, I'm so in love with him and I don't want to lose him. And I said, okay, well, explain to me why you love him. What, what makes you so in love with him? And she starts going down this list of all the things she's done for him. You know, I make, I, I've helped him with this and I've done this and so on and so forth and so forth. And at the end of it, I was like, okay, but what the hell does he do for you? And she was silent. She was stumped. She had nothing to say. And she was like, damn, well, he doesn't do anything. Literally, like literally, this man is just physically there in her life, takes, 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 but doesn't really provide anything other than a warm body. I guess if you want to count uh, physical intimacy, that would be the only thing. But bottom line was her attachment to this man was based on her investment in this man. And the fact that it was all about what she's done for him. And what happens to so many women is that when you have invested so much time and energy, you try to hold on because you want a return on your investment. You don't want to feel like you wasted your time. So even though your time has been wasted, it continues to be wasted, you have not accepted that reality. You're trying to basically change, the, the, change this whole situation and, and make it into something fruitful and worth it. And so you keep pouring more and you keep giving more, but you keep wasting more. You keep losing more. You keep draining yourself in the process and you don't win. And, and again, it, it doesn't take, if, if a man is not reciprocating your efforts, is not pouring into you as you pour into him already with where you are. Let's, let's just say you haven't even been giving y'all. Let's just say you've been pouring in at a level eight, all right? If this man can't even match level eight yet, going to level 10 ain't going to change nothing. Like if, if you think that now he's going to start to finally give because you gave more. No, nah, now nah, if we're saying, okay, I'm giving that level eight, He's given that level eight. Maybe it's even a seven. I want level 10. I want it all. Okay, now we can argue that now you step it up to 10. He can step it up to 10. You, you can't expect to receive what you're not willing to give. But when this man is not doing nothing and you're already doing everything or you're already doing a lot, no, doing more doesn't change anything. So in this situation and in many other situations, there, again, it creates this attachment and this allows the situation to be dragged along. Now you may say, well, how does that lead to why he's wasting my time? Because again, if you keep giving to someone and he does not have to give back, that's a hell of a situation. I mean, listen, it's wrong, it's unhealthy. But think about if you got to work for a job and you did not have to show up to work, but you got paid a 40 hour check every single week. How many of y'all gonna run out and say, oh, I gotta leave this job because it's the right thing to do. That's, that's what a person should do in, in a relationship. But let's be real, in, in the job analogy, most people aren't gonna do that. It's what people should do. But again, as I said to you earlier, if you live your life waiting for people to do right by you, rather than learning how to do right by you yourself, you're gonna lose in life. You're going to lose a lot, all right? So, yes, bottom line is the focusing on what you're giving him creates that attachment, creates that wasted time, blinds you from the red flags and the other issues or contributes to the blinding of you, of, or blinding of those things. And this is what creates this dynamic where, yes, many men who do not have good intentions 
are going to take advantage of that situation. Plain and simple. There are great men out there who would not allow it to play out that way, but there are plenty of bad men out there who are going to take advantage, and you have to be mindful of that. So moving along to number three, another reason why men keep wasting your time is because he wants you, but he does not want to be committed to you. All right. Now, this is something that is extremely common. Many of you have faced this or have lived this, whether you even realize it or not. All right. Um, and it's created a lot of dysfunction, a lot of heartache. And it's, it's something that I talk about in my book, He's Lying, Sis. Get your copy. All right, click the link in the, in the description or the comment section. And one of the chapters in the book is called He Doesn't Want a Girlfriend, But He Acts Like Your Boyfriend. All right. Or he does not want to make you his girlfriend, but he acts like a boyfriend. So bottom line is what we're seeing is that, believe it or not, a man can meet you, think you're an amazing woman, genuinely like you. All right. Let me, let me stress that. Genuinely like you. Meaning he enjoys your company. Um, he enjoys, you know, doing things with you. Uh, he really thinks you're a cool girl, whatever. Yet, be highly attracted to you, clearly want to sleep with you, but still not want to be committed to you in a relationship. Now, I know that sounds freaking ridiculous, right? Like, how could he like you, be attracted to you, all these things, but still not want to be in a relationship with you? So it, it reminds me of this one time I remember I was in Miami, Florida, and I was in an Uber. And I had to go somewhere. I can't remember where I was going. Anyways, the Uber driver was a young guy. He, we were talking, and somehow it came up that I speak on relationships. And so he mentioned, he said, you know, one thing that he noticed was that men and women, a lot of men and women understand the concept of the one, all right? That one person, soulmate, whatever you want to call it. And he, and he said, you know, a lot of women especially have grown up being more fed that, that, that ideology, all right? But what he has seen play out as an adult is where more men actually stick to the principle than women do. And what I mean by that is a man could, again, like a woman, think she's attractive, all of that is there, but she's just not it. She's not the one. Something is missing. There, there's some kind of disconnect. She just, as much as he likes her, doesn't take him to that next level. And though he wants to be able to enjoy this woman, he does not want to make the mistake of committing to this woman. All right? However, on the flip side, women, though they know, you know, your intuition, your spirit knows when this is it and when it's not. All right? You know when something's missing, but when you have determined that you like this man and you want this man, many women will overlook the ideology of the one, will overlook the need for connection, real connection to be in place and simply lock into, but I want this to work, all right? And so now what you have is the woman holding on to what she wants all right, and trying to make this work. And the man, whether it be because he doesn't know how to let go or because, uh, you know, he, he, he again gets caught up in his own selfishness of I want to be able to enjoy this woman, though I'm not willing to take it to the next level with her, find themselves in these situations. Now, here's the messed up part. Sometimes that dynamic does turn to a relationship because his, his desire to not lose the benefits of this woman and her desire to push things forward come together to then move them to, in, in the direction of actually committing to each other or even sometimes marrying. And this is where, and I'm not going to go too deep into this, right? even though I kind of am, but <laughs> understand that this is what leads to a lot of marriages that should have never become, that should have never happened, all right? It was always something missing. A lot of people who are married to each other, at least one, if not both, parties involved knew something wasn't right, something was off, but that didn't 
but they could not let go of the fact that they still like this person. All right. So getting back to the main point here again, he likes you, but he does not want to commit to you. And so this is where as a woman, you have really got to be mindful of understanding how to decipher the guy who's genuinely serious about you, which is why when people dismiss the, the need for titles, I scoff at that. I'm just like, whatever, that's, that's nonsense. Of course there should be titles. Why, if someone is serious about you, why couldn't they give you a title? When we dismiss the need for titles, and, and I view titles as more so as putting an official stamp on what this is, we create an environment where we can have a more vague approach, which leads to more confusion, and which leads to situations where, okay, now, if we say, well, titles aren't important, you know, I, I treat you like you're my girl, yeah, but then months later, when you check that man, and he says to you, well, I never told you you were my girlfriend. I, I never told you we were, we were serious like that. Oh, you, you see how that no title thing, where it got you? You, you see how it bit you in the behind? This is why you got to be mindful of that. And again, I would argue I've yet to meet a man who's genuinely, seriously into a woman and want to be with her and is like, nah, nah, but I can't give her no title. There are, I'm sorry, there may be some rare situ exceptions to where I know some men or I've, I've coached some men who have been traumatized, who have, they felt like whenever they put a title on it, things went left. But my argument is you don't accept that because he needs to learn to heal from that and address that issue properly so that he can now move forward in a more healthy manner. But it does, there are exceptions, but those are minorities. Those are rare minorities. Typically, the guy who's serious has no problem giving that title. So anyways, yes, he likes you, but he doesn't want to commit to you. And this leads to men holding on to you who will never give you what you really desire and need. And again, I got to keep repeating it. This is why you cannot live your life waiting and hoping for that man or that person or whoever to do the right thing. You have to focus on you doing what's best, learning how to better handle these situations so that you don't find yourself getting caught up in this. And Lord, months, years, decades pass by still with this guy in a dead-end relationship that never led to what you deserved. All right, so let's keep this moving. The next reason why men keep wasting your time, because you gave him the booty and he liked it. <laughs> so listen, now just so you understand, I would use the actual words, the S-E, you know, but only reason why I'm avoiding it is because sometimes videos get dinged for using certain words. So I'm dancing around that. So when I say the booty, you know what I'm talking about, all right? But yes, this creates unhealthy attachments. And now I got to give a story exposing myself, all right? This is how bad it can get, and this is what can happen. Now, mind you, this was a long, very long time ago. Don't, well, you're going to judge me if you want to. But anyways, the point is, I'll never forget when I was younger, all right? Met a woman, we start kicking it, um, and this is, this, yeah, anyways, we start kicking it, and we got uh, physically involved very early in, in our situation, and let's just say, I don't want to be too vulgar, but when it came to oral pleasures, this woman was magnificent. I, I'm just keeping it real, all right? <laughs> Again, I'm not trying to, to, to be too raunchy, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it was great. All right, and so <laughs> what happened was, I'll never forget, um, went to hang out with her, and so basically I was kind of, again, this is, this is before I, I evolved as a man. I was doing what other, some guys had to do, what some of the guys I described in the situation do, kind of like, all right, we're kicking it. She's not really asking me to define the situation, so I'm not looking to define the situation. It, to my understanding and belief, we're both cool with this casual thing. But then I start to sense that, okay, she now is starting to want more. Whether she always didn't was hiding it or it's just now changing, whatever the case may be, she's now wanting more. And so then I remember we, we hung out and we were engaged again physically. And after I left, I was driving in my car and I was like, dang, if I don't make this girl my girlfriend, I'm going to lose out on that good stuff. 
And I was like, maybe I need to make her my girlfriend. Now, it took me about 30 seconds to snap out of that nonsense. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. What am I talking about? Well, I can't make her my girlfriend. That's, that's not fair. That's ridiculous. No, no, no. I, at that point, I realized, you know what? I got to let this whole thing go. This is this is crossed an unhealthy line. For me to even consider getting a relationship when I know damn well that's not what I want and I'm or am I ready for at this moment, this is a problem. End up cutting things off. But, and I'm not saying there aren't other men who, there are plenty of men who are mature enough to not let that, even if you guys cross that line, fool them. But I also know of situations where men weren't aware enough to stop themselves and say, no, let me not do that. Plenty of men have either, again, either try to drag things along because they want to keep that physical benefit or actually get in a relationship with you. But here's the thing. This is why when a woman says to me, if a woman comes and tells me a situation where she's dating, dating a guy, but he's not, let's say, giving all the time and energy that she really needs and requires. But she's made the whole committing to her as the, the main argument she's going she's gonna to come at him with. And then, you know, she comes back to me a month later and says, okay, well, he's finally willing to get in a relationship. To me, it's like, okay, and what? You didn't win a prize. If he's still mistreating you, if he's not willing to pour into you the way that you need, him committing to you does not solve anything. So I'm saying that to bring up the point that a lot of women get caught up and, again, allow, get their time wasted because you think commitment equals seriousness. No, no, no. Commitment plus effort equals seriousness. Commitment plus willing to embrace your needs and desires equals seriousness. Commitment by itself, not good enough. Even the effort by itself, but unwilling to commit, not good enough. If your desire is for a real, healthy, and successful relationship, you need commitment plus those things, all right? And so in this situation where the man will waste your time because you gave him that booty and he liked it, or you gave him the other stuff, okay, and he loved that, what you're going to see is a man who simply wants to have you at his convenience but is still unwilling to give you what you need. That is your sign. That is your understanding of, oh, okay, I need to let this go because I'm going to say it again. You can't wait for them to do right by you. You have to do right by you. You've got to recognize the issues, address them, and if they're not corrected, let his behind go. All right, so we got another one, and then we're going to have the number one reason why men keep wasting your time. So one more before we get to the number one reason. And the other one is... He actually wasn't trying to waste your time. What do I mean by this? I mean, I've seen tons of situations where men come into getting to know you with genuine intention, um, showing effort, being willing to embrace your needs and desires, communicate, all that good stuff. Maybe he's doing really well for the first month. Maybe it's a few months, right? But at some point, things go left. And it could be a go left in the sense of it goes from him putting forth the effort to no longer putting forth the effort. It could be go left from he was all talking about relationships. Hell, sometimes even talking about marriage. All of a sudden now, he ain't even mentioning commitment anymore or dodges the question. One way or another, things are no longer on the upward trajectory that they once were. And so now women will see this scenario and say, oh, you see, these men ain't worth nothing. Uh, he's been wasting my time. He's playing games. And I have to shed light on the fact that, no, that's not always the case. And the reason why I need you to understand that is because, one, we have to understand that there's going to be scenarios, there's going to be situations where we meet someone, there's going to be initially a lot of like, desire, maybe chemistry, whatever, but then in time, we've now discovered it's really not there. It, 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 we like this person, but it's not there. But again, going back to my earlier point, the problem for a lot of women, might be you, might not be, is that despite the fact that you've now come to a place of realizing it's not really there, you've become attached because of the time, the energy, 
maybe the intimacy that you gave him, whatever that you've invested in this situation now attaches you to him in a way that causes you to ignore the fact that even you realize this ain't really it. But again, the man, he recognizes it and he does not ignore it. But he'll, he does not also, and this is not saying this is okay, but he doesn't always just flat out let you go even though he now recognizes he doesn't see this going anywhere. Because for that man, all right, for a lot of men, being able to just kick it with you, lay down with you, whatever, is kind of like the consolation prize. Again, not saying that's fair or healthy, but telling you this is what happens. This is what happens. But again, it's important that you understand that this was not the initial intent. Because when you start to believe that every situation that does not work out is a man who was playing games from the start, you develop the mentality that every last man is playing games, that every last man isn't serious, that every last man is trying to waste your time. And that's simply not true. We've got to understand, it, it's too, that's a very toxic mentality to hold on to, and it's not reality. We also have to talk about, my, the spirit kind of hit me, so I got to say it, we got to talk about the fact that sometimes things don't go left simply because he has changed his mind, Sometimes, sometimes things go left because you kept holding back. Yeah, you. I'm sorry. I got to call you out. You. You had your walls up. You were afraid to be vulnerable. You were not reciprocating his efforts. There's only so long a man can go pouring into a woman, making an effort, doing all that he's supposed to do, but not seeing enough interest, desire, and effort on her end. And too many times you have women who defend this position of essentially having this wait and see approach. He has to earn my vulnerability. He has to earn my efforts. He has to earn me giving to him. Because in your mind, well, the last time I gave to a man, I got played. But you didn't, give, you didn't get played because you quote unquote gave to a man. You got played because you gave to the wrong man. You got played because your selection process was not as on point as it needed to be. You got played for various other reasons. It wasn't the giving itself that did, that did you in, all right? And so, but when you carry that mentality onto the next guy who could actually be a great guy, who could actually be the right guy, you start off on the wrong foot. And you set yourself on a path that can create problems in that potential relationship. So again, it wasn't about this man trying to waste your time. And, and if you're trying to understand, well, how would I know the difference? At the end of the day, if you reach a point where you realize this ain't it, then it's just not it, regardless of what the intentions were. But in most of these cases, these guys were really on point initially for a decent amount of time. And I know some people say, well, there's guys who are playing games who will be on point from day one. Those are minority situations. Most men, especially in, in today's world, who are coming in with the intention to waste your time, play games, whatever, are trying to do as little as possible to get as much as possible. They're not trying to put forth full effort if they don't have to, all right? So if he's extremely on point, then chances are he was trying to give this a real shot. But again, things can go left, and I simply just want you to have a better understanding of these different dynamics so that you don't carry toxic, unhealthy mentalities with you onto your next situation. And now, for the one that you wanted or been waiting for, the number one reason why men keep wasting your time is because you let them. I know, that's not what you wanted to hear, but and some of you probably already knew that was going to be the, the number one reason. But listen, to get a little bit deeper into it, when I say because you let them, I kind of mentioned it as we were going along in this list. You see it's not there, but you keep trying. You give so much and become attached from your investment, so you keep trying. Your intuition is telling you this isn't it. You keep trying. You're waiting for him to do the right thing, so you keep trying. You see, like, you, you, you basically undermine the power that you have to dictate what needs to happen here or to to set the standard of what needs to happen, to properly address the situations, and to make the decision on your end to let go or to continue. And again, I'm, I'm not against you 
trying with a man. I'm against you trying for the wrong reasons. I'm against you trying when you know he's not it. I'm against you trying because you have an unhealthy attachment to him. I'm against you not listening to your intuition, not taking time to heal, not making sure that you consult with God if you are a believer. That's what I don't like to see, all right? If you do those things, there's some situations are going to have some bumps in the road and, and two people can eventually get it together and it becomes an amazing relationship. But many situations are just not for you. But if you allow this man to waste your time, he will waste it, all right? Because again, you're probably going to meet more men. Well, no, you're not probably. You're going to meet more men who are not for you than are for you. That's just the reality of it. And therefore, you're going to meet more men who will easily get caught up in or intentionally be there just to take from you and drain you. And you've got to protect your spirit. You've got to protect your peace. You have to do what is best for you. So when you understand that you are the decider of the time that will be given and what time you will be allowed, what, that you will allow uh, to be taken from you, all right, you now claim your power to make sure that no one gets to waste your time because you will understand what you are pouring into every moment, every second, every situation, and what you need to do to set yourself up for greater success. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. So one of the very common things I've noticed that women struggle with in dating is this fear of asking men questions, this fear of expressing themselves and the 